welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fennel Neptune. Today we have with us the Environmental Health Aid for Vector Control, Esther Griffith, and she'll be providing us with information on rodents and rodent control. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Great. We have the term rodents. Can you explain to us what exactly are rodents? Rodents are gnawing mammals which have incisors which grow like five inches per year and they are an order of rats, mice and hamsters. In St. Lucia we have three types of rats that we work with which are the house mouse, the roof rat and the Norway rat. As the name explains, the roof rat, we would no normally find them in your ceilings, they would climb trees and so on. The Norway rat, they are the ground rats. They would, they would make their burrows on the ground, they would normally be on the ground. That doesn't mean that they don't go up to the ceiling, but they are known to be ground rats. And the house mouse, those are the most troublesome ones that you will find in your homes. Okay. And um, with those rats and those mice, um, what health risk um, are they to the community? Well, as we know, the rats have a disease which can be spread, which is called leptospirosis. And leptospirosis, you get that through an infected rat. All rats are not infected with the disease, but we have some of them that are infected. And you can get in contact with the disease if you, for instance, you have an abrasion, a cut underneath your feet, and you would step in a puddle of water where the urine of an infected rat was, is there, is present, and that goes into the abrasion, then you can be, um, you can contact the disease. Okay. And you mentioned in terms of if you have a cut, you can get leptospirosis. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the other ways you can actually um, get leptospirosis um, from the rat? Okay, through your mucous membranes as well, your nose, your eyes, your mouth. For instance, if the rat pees or urinates um, in an area and you're there, maybe there's dust or something. The dust can enter your one of those mucous membranes and you can be diagnosed with the leptospirosis disease. Okay. And uh, how would a person know um, they actually have leptospirosis? What are the signs and symptoms of that? Okay, some of the um, symptoms are rash, headaches, m fever, diarrhea, vomiting, muscle pain, and we have a few of them. Yeah, rats, vomiting, vomiting diarrhea, and f fever, and a few more. Okay, and with those symptoms, um, how can a person actually um, be cured from leptospirosis okay what normally happens is as soon as the onset when you feel those symptoms what somebody can do is within five to seven days of those symptoms they could go to the hospital and there they can be treated with either doxycycline or penicillin if one is allergic to either or they would just have to take it would just be vice versa sorry okay so um, would the Ministry of Health encourage persons to actually um, visit a doctor if they have any of the signs and symptoms? Yes, we would. Okay. Yes. And um, what harm, what other harm would you say that the rodents can actually cause? Okay, well there are a, a number of diseases that the rats can give you, like rat bite fever, we have toxoplasmosis. There are a number of diseases that you can get from the rodents. Okay, but the most, the most, the most common, common one is leptospirosis. Is, okay. And um, how would a person actually know um, that they actually have rodents at their home or in the place of um, establishment, the business place? Okay, you would see the signs. For example, you would see the droppings, the rat feces, or maybe rub marks around an area. Rub marks, which we call like the rats normally carry an oil on the body and they would be constantly going in and out for that same area. You would see the rub marks. You would also take the smell, a mousy smell. Mm -hmm. Also, they would put their burrows in the grounds. And maybe you'd see food scraps leading to maybe an area that they frequent. Okay, but would you see any droppings? Yes, the droppings, the feces as well. What we know about rats is as soon as they urinate, they would defecate at the same time. Okay. So you would see the droppings. The urinate, the pee, you would not see because you would need a UV light, a special light mm -hmm. to pass over. And then you would know that there has been pee from a rat. Can you tell us what is the difference between a rat and a mouse? Okay, for one, the house mouse, it's very small mm -hmm. and the tail is longer than the head and the body together. The droppings are very small and pointed at the two ends. Okay. And for the Norway rat or the roof rat, that's the bigger rats, the droppings is much bigger. The Norway rat, the droppings are long and blunt on both ends. 
the roof rack like the house mouse the drop-in is bigger but it has the same pointed ends both ends are pointed okay but would the mice also um leave the pee as well yes yes they would okay. as long as they defecate they urinate at the same time it's for all of them for both of them okay. yes well, all three of them great well we are due for a break we will be back in a moment Look me, look me, me my here, me my here. Saka fella. What happened there, Pinky? Hey, man, I did taking a little nap there last night. I don't sleep, Gaston. Uh. My dog, me also, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Now I come for a little nap under the tree. Me and Gwen come beating my plea to you. I have a racket. I hit in them endless mosquitoes. What is the ministry of health doing? The ministry of health. Nah, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Imagine last night I caught a rat. Nah, Look, nah, I have it there for to, to me, burn. Listen to me, Hela. Pinky, the government cannot do everything. Look at your surroundings. You have breeding grounds for mosquitoes and rats. The mosquitoes can give you Zika. Chicken gurnia, dengue, yellow fever. The rats can give you leptospirosis. And why are you sitting so close to that rat? You know the rats can give you leptospirosis. So come with me. Let's go and look at your surroundings and see what we can do to make a difference and make a change. All right, well, let's go. You see that? You have to do something to about that. You have a home for the rats. You have food for the rats. Hey, you have hey. coconut husk with oh, water I in it. That's that. breeding ground for mosquitoes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We have to do something about that. Let's hey. clean that up. Okay. All right, nice try. Pinky, what the drum cover doing there? That should be sealed on the drum correctly. Ah, I forgot that. No, That's please, how mosquitoes sir. can breed, you know. Okay. Pinky, how are you? Need to play your part, you know. All right, I'll try. Pinky, come. Let me show you that. You seen that? That's my garbage bin there. That's where I put in all my garbage. But you cannot have it open like that. That's where the rats can go and eat. Okay, I you, didn't know you that. You cannot have that. And you're saying it's the government? You have to take accountability of your own action. Keep it sealed. Okay, all right. Okay, mock up one. Look at this tire. That's a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. We have to get rid of that water. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. Stop one, stop one. What do we do with that now? Let's put it under the house. Okay. After we have removed all the water, we can put it in a place where it won't collect water, okay? Okay, so all right. Let's put it under the house, all right? Okay, all right. So okay. it's safe under there. Okay, so when it is there, it will not collect water to breed mosquitoes. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, okay, man. boom. I'm up on a bajo here. All right, very good. So you see, Pinky, these are some of the changes you can make. Be that change. Pest must go. Merci, merci, Jamal. Merci, and shebu sa mucho ma odia. Aye. This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. For further information, contact the Environmental Health Department at 468-3700 or 468-3706. Be the change. Pest must go. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with Esther Griffith on rodents and its control. Um, Miss um, Griffith, can you tell us why is it necessary for persons to actually get rid of rats or rodents? Well, I would say that it's necessary to get rid of rats because for one, they cause a lot of damage. For instance, um, property damage, uh, we lose a lot of food, we have a lot of food loss also and um, we don't want people to be um, infected with the disease, like I said. And um, yeah, basically that's basically it. Okay. Loss of damage and mm -hmm. how can persons um, actually prevent rodents or um, discourage rodents in um, their homes and also in business places? Okay. The first of all, I would say that we would um, they need to rat-proof their homes. Like for instance, put some screens, rat screens, and um, proper sanitation. The way in which they store their food as well. Also, proper di um, garbage disposal, for instance, putting the garbage out on collection day so we wouldn't have garbage all around and that because all we know that the rats need food, shelter and water to survive. So as long as they get those things, they will. So if we take those things away from them and the way in which we, like I said, store our food, 
we can control the rats in our community and our business places. Okay, but for some persons, they might say, okay, we need to get rid of the garbage mm -hmm. um, in order to get prevent rats. But um, given that collections are not on certain days, how can persons actually store their garbage to prevent rats coming in there? Okay, what they can do is get proper garbage bins with lids and also bins that are like two to three inches off the ground, those bins with wheels. Also, if they have the um, meat, so on, after we clean our meat, with, some of us tend to just drop it in the mm -hmm. bin. What we could do is freeze them in plastic bags, put them in plastic bags and put them in our freezer until collection day. And make sure that we don't leave the bins outside, like on the main road, until collection day. Okay. And what about the business places? What advice would you give them? Well, for the business places, it would be a good idea for them to get grease straps as well and also get those bins. Mm -hmm. I think Solibus would provide some of the bins with um, the leads. Make sure that they put the tidy garbage properly. And some of them can also store it inside the business until collection day and do just as the householder may do freeze their meat because most of the restaurants in town, we know we have a lot of restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. So what they can do is try to freeze some of their meat and put it out on collection day as well. Okay. And how can a person actually destroy rats on the property? Okay. First, what we normally see at environmental health that we would start with source reduction. We don't okay. want to go di tell a person directly, use rodenticide. We we'll try to do the proper sanitation, proper disposal of garbage, also, um, we would ask them to use glue traps, bait stations, and if this doesn't work and it's um, a case where it's beyond the traps, then we would ask them to use rodenticide or we would take it on our own to do an assessment and then go out to do the baiting for them. But our first thing at the environmental health is source reduction. Okay. And um, what role does environmental health play? Because you mentioned that the environmental health division actually go out. What role does the environmental health division play in terms of preventing and treating um, the situation of rats? Okay, so what we do right now is basically surveillance, surveillance where we do limited baiting. We have officers who go out every day to Castry City and they would do some baiting around the place. And um, normally we do an assessment first. Mm -hmm. Then in three days or two days, we would go out, do some baiting according to how the area is. When we come back, we would do a recheck to see if it has gone up or if it has gone down. Okay. And if you can give us your final thoughts, a message to St. Lucians as it relates to rats. Okay, what I would have to say is that we don't want to be like, we don't want to be stuck with leptospirosis. So the first thing that we can do as a people is try to store our garbage properly um, the proper sanitation which is always in place we always need to put in place also and put our garbage out on collection day and try rat proofing our premises wonderful yeah wonderful well i want to thank you so much for being part of our program and providing us with information on rodent control thank you so much you're welcome thank you well that's how we come to the end of health focus on behalf of the entire production team, I am Fernal Neptune. Thanks for watching.